Are we ready? <laughs> what do you need? Ready. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to another edition of Cooking Chris's Dishes with the good old boy, that's me. And we're cooking dishes from RecipesThatCrock.com, which is my wife's food blog that has over 400 slow cooking recipes. And today, it's all about you, the reader. Of course, it's always been all about you. And the reason I say that it's all about you is because remember how I've been telling you on all these shows, hey, if you want to see something cooked, send us a comment, send us an email, tell us about it, stop us on the street, come on over, knock on the door, and let us know what's going on kind of thing. Well, today we're doing that very thing. We have a friend named Jackie, who is a friend of the site and a friend of the show, who sent us an email about a hobo stew. She sent us three versions, and this one is an Italian hobo stew. I've never met an Italian hobo before, but uh, that's just because I've not been trained to. Get it? Hobo. Hobos weren't hobos the ones that were on the trains? Oh. I used to jump on trains and ride them? I should know. I worked for the railroad. Toot toot. Toot toot. Yeah. Sorry, we're getting a little off track here. Oh. All right. All right, we're going to do this for real now. Oh my gosh, <laughs> where is it? <laughs> oh, now yeah, you found it. <laughs> All right, so this recipe is real simple. It's a dump in the pot and cook it kind of recipe. And it goes a little something like this. You need one package of Simply Potatoes. Our store does not have Simply Potatoes. They simply do not have them. <laughs> so we are using Orida Potatoes O'Brien. O'Brien. That's Irish. I know. So oh, we're going to have Italian. Irish potatoes in an Italian <laughs> stew. It's like America. It's the melting pot. And, uh, all right, and you also need one and a half pounds of ground chuck. Poor chuck. <laughs> and uh, saute, she says, sauteed with salt and pepper and one cup of chopped onion. We have onion that has been already put into this meat, and we also have onions that are in the O'Brien peppers. Right. It's and that ground beef we've already did on a previous video. Remember? Did you watch? Were you doing your own work? So we're, that makes this a super easy recipe to throw yep, together. Yep, yep, yep. It's already done. It's already done. Already did it. So you've got your meat now. It says a pound and a half. This is not quite a pound and a half. And the reason why is because in the prep of this episode, we pre-made. I say we. <laughs> she pre-made this recipe already, so she used three baggies of it, which was no, three pounds, I and used... she used over, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're kidding it fix all it. wrong. Fix it. Well, you explained it to me before, and I still didn't get it, so go ahead. What did you do to mess this I up? S <laughs> I said I had three total bags. This is like Colin Cormac. <laughs> I had three total bags of ground beef. Each bag equals a pound. They were frozen when I was starting. So instead of chopping one in half, and since we were gonna mix both of these soups together in the end, I put two bags in the one that you're gonna taste, and I put, we're gonna use one bag in this one, then we'll mix it all together so it will end up being a pound and a half in each one. <sighs> Do we need Addie to explain it to you? <laughs> you might. <laughs> Just all they need to know is it's a pound and a half, and that's what will be on the site. You're just leaving the... But what it comes down to <laughs> is use a pound and a half of ground beef. That's 24 ounces of poor chuck. You also need one chopped onion, and again, we already have our onion that's been chopped up and put in our beef, as well as the onion in here, so we're gonna back off the onion in our recipe a little bit. The original recipe, we'll put it up on the site. You do with onion however you want but we're gonna kind of back off the onion just a hair. Uh, you also need one 15 ounce can of stewed tomatoes with oregano, basil, and garlic. Take your brand, it doesn't matter. You wanna find yourself some Italian tomatoes. 
That's not it. potatoes. Not, not potatoes. Well, no, no. You want your you want your potatoes to be completely Irish. <laughs> Irish, I knew I. But do you want diced tomatoes? We're using diced tomatoes with basil, garlic, and oregano. There's your Italian for the Italian hobo soup. You want two cans of sliced carrots. We have them uh, right here. And you also want two cans of peas. Would you like some? Say peas. <laughs> and <laughs> the jokes are getting bad today. Yes. And then salt and pepper to taste. Um, she says this is when you're cooking your ground beef. We've already got our ground beef cooked. And seasoned. And, and seasoned. So it's, it's such an awesome done. trick. It really is. We'll link to that down below as well. Well, you can see me in another awesome video. <laughs> And Jackie's suggestion, or directions rather, these aren't suggestions, these are directions. I'm going to do them, Jackie, I promise. Is to saute the ground beef with the chopped onion and the seasoned to taste with salt and pepper. Done! And in the bag. <laughs> and then, oh, she says it at the top. If I start at the top, the directions I know that in a large six-quart crock pot, combine the following items. Layer in the order given, starting with the bottom layer. The bottom layer would be our simply potatoes. They're going to go in my oh crock pot. <laughs> no, your melting pot. That's right. Oh, beautiful <laughs> for oh, oh. for say. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. You don't know what kind of props I have back here. I had no clue. <laughs> she is quick, isn't she? Um, your one and a half pounds of ground pork chuck. Now, again, this isn't quite a pound and a half. And the other one, there's over a pound and a half. We're going to put this all together and we're going to have three pounds of meat in our soup. And then my coworkers come Monday will be very happy. Um, you need, next is your chopped onion. Let's just pretend chopped onion because it's already in the beef. And then one 15 ounce can of your stewed tomatoes right here. <laughs> and I've even got the labels facing me. Right on the top like that, layered in. Next we have our two cans of sliced carrots. And do we drain these? Nope. Including juice. It says it right there. I like carrots. Mm-mm-mm. Tell you what, it looks good. It's very pretty. Two cans of carrots in the pot, and then the last thing is your two cans of peas. Do you drain them? No, including juice. So, right on the top. Look at that, Jenny. There's peas and carrots. <laughs> oh my god! I'm sorry. Jackie. He's only been making me watch Forrest Gump like for the last. I three love weeks. that movie. That is my favoriteest movie ever. Don't make fun of I'm Forrest not make, Gump. I'm not making fun of it. I'm just saying it has a very significant presence. His mama our... said he could do anything. <laughs> okay. So we have there. We go. Um, your ground beef, I'm sorry, your potatoes on the bottom, then your ground beef, and then your tomatoes, and then your peas and carrots. Actually, in the order that Jackie says, carrots and peas. And now, all we do is put the lid on it. Behind you. If you like it, then you gotta put a lid on it. If you like it, then you gotta put the lid on it. No. No? Oh, no, hang on. <clears throat> You're messing with prop. I said no! <laughs> that was a good one. Alright, and then we're going to set this on high for one hour. So we're going to turn on our slow cooker to slow cook on high on high for one hour. Start and then after one hour, we come back and we set it on low. I should have read the directions before I started this taping. Is this the one that's seven to eight hours? Oh, it's right there. I do this early morning. I start the crock pot on high for the first hour, then turn it on to low and leave it all day. Cooking time on low for six to eight hours. So on high for one hour and then six to eight hours on low. So if this is one of those things where you get up in the morning, you get ready, you put your stuff together, 
You get ready for work or whatever you're going to... Uh, I have yes, a confession. Oh. Ours was only on high for about 20 minutes before we left for the day. Uh -huh. So, And it turned out great. So, oops. Sorry. I knocked Did me. you just hit... Did you just... I, I was talking with my hands and I hit the I camera. don't... Okay. For y'all who've never seen my wife have a conversation... If you tie her hands to her knees, she would break her shoulders. Why would you? Because not that not that I would. I'm not saying I'm like gonna tie your hands to your knees or anything like that. I'm just saying this is how my wife talks like this. She's like the Jackie Chan of conversation. She's like Whoa, and talk in and talk in and now she's gonna go. Oh. I don't. Know. But anyway, <laughs> on high for an hour. We did ours for 20 minutes. Chris said it still turned out okay. I trust her. She's my wife. And uh, then set it on low for six to eight hours. That's because we were running late this morning. That's because you got up late. Well, that and I was running around here and I forgot that it needed to be on high first. And so I set it on for mm. 20 minutes and then we had to go. So I had to turn it to low so it wouldn't be on high the whole time. And she tasted it when we got back and she said it was? Great. Fantastic. So now you set this for high, however long you want to depending on how disorganized and late you are like we are, and then <laughs> set it on low for six to eight hours. Just set it on low all day. It's just going to cook on low and just cook everything together. Now, like I said, we have this recipe already done, so I will turn to grab it. It's plugged in. Oh, then I should unplug it first because <laughs> I don't want to take the wall with me. And I will now unplug this one. Set you over here. Take you. Set you all right there so you can get in the frame of that camera. And oh, look, she even got me a ball already. You didn't get me a spoon, but I should do that myself. Ah! Thank God it! My kid just caught on to what happened. I don't know what happened, but Ma's laughing, so I'm laughing out. Okay, so. <laughs> what happened? So, my lovely, vengeant wife <laughs> has got me all day, and it's my fault. You see, today is April 2nd. On April 1st... When we're taping this, it's April 2nd. Yes, today, the day that we are actually taping this segment, this cooking segment, is April 2nd of 2016. That is the day after my second Christmas, which is April 1st. Um, Y'all who haven't kind of caught on to my personality, I love, 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 love April Fool's Day. My family, however, does not. Usually my wife will get up early and try to beat me before I get up and leave the house and not come back until I've gone to work. Um, but I, I kind of tend to have a lot of fun. I get to be a little creative around the house. And um, when I got home from work the night before, I printed out pictures of me in various poses making funny faces and, and snuck them in different places around the house. My daughter got the brunt of it. Um, I stuffed all of her pants with toilet paper and uh, her shoes with notes and things like that. And then uh, I also uh, found a really cool trick, and y'all can try this if you want to, but uh, take a couple pieces of dried macaroni and put them underneath the little uh, little thingies underneath your toilet seat. Wash your hands when you're done. But uh, you take your macaroni and put underneath the toilet seat and then gently set the toilet seat down. Then when somebody goes to sit down, you know, have a seat, the macaroni crumbles up and it sounds like you've broken your toilet seat and it was kind of funny she lifted the lid and there was a little note there that said april fools well april 2nd but what did your wife tell you on she, april 1st she told me that she would get me back why because you wouldn't stop because she's mean <laughs> because you did something unlawful you did something unethical. You did it on April 2nd. <laughs> no, no. I told you on April 1st that I didn't need a day. 
a special day on the calendar to no. get you back, and that I was a very, very patient woman. You also said earlier today that you were done. No, I didn't. You inferred that. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> when you said all of them are out of the car. Yes, I didn't mean that they were all gone, dear. One thing that y'all need to know about me in this conversation, y'all are asking, well, okay, what's that, what did she do? Because I screamed. <laughs> the one thing I didn't tell you is the reason why I screamed. And ever since I was a little kid, I've been terrified of spiders. I mean, terrified of spiders. Bears don't scare me. Large men with baseball bats don't scare me. Stop. But one thing that will scare me and make me cry is a spider. I don't care if it's a great big spider that is bigger than my hand. I don't care if it's a little bitty spider that you can just barely see. Spiders terrify me. And I don't know why because I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. I love Spider-Man. I love Spider-Man since I was a kid. But real spiders scare me. Or things that look like real spiders. So, <laughs> today, as we were getting ready to tape this segment, my wife says, I'll just go over there and get that little crock pot right over there. The one with the funny handle, we'll use it for one of these recipes. So I reach over there, grab the crock pot, set it on the counter, and open up the lid, and there's a giant brown plastic spider. Very realistic looking spider. Ice cream, throw the crock pot, ha ha, we had our last, my wife thought it was funny. It was great. <laughs> thought it was over, you know. And then we got up to leave and uh, go run around today, and I got in the car, and in the little console of the door handle was another spider. It scared me. Oh no, you missed the one by the door. Oh, that's right. There was the one by the door because I went to grab my keys and there was a spider on my keys. Again, kind of it took me off guard a little bit. I go in. There's one in the in the console of the door. I <laughs> again scream. I grab a hold of it like the man that I am and I throw it out into the road. I littered today. I'm sorry, people. Sorry, neighbors, but I'm not going to go pick it up. And then when I went to get back in the car, ha ha, laughing, ha ha. There's another one. I'm sitting there on the odometer. It scared me again. I am terrified of spiders. So, ha ha, we've had our fun. I even bowed to my wife <laughs> and declared her the winner. <laughs> and what does she do to me? <laughs> Let me show you. Hang on a second. Oh, there's no paper towels. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> I reach in to grab a spoon. <laughs> and that is and that is show that camera. I have to edit this later. I don't even want to cuz no! I don't care if they're real, if they're fake. I don't like them. Oh, don't go in the morning for a plastic no, spider. I, I like it. It's brought me no, lots no, of joy. No, no, no. <laughs> All right. Can we go back to eating and cooking this rest of this episode? Sure, get a spoon. Oh, forgot to grab a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm officially part of All this right. right now. Now, <sighs> back to the soup. We have our Italian hobo soup, and as you can see, it's done. It's still a little warm, not quite as bad. Our power went off today. Uh, it's really windy here in Indiana, and so when we got home from running around, we were expected to come straight home and start filming these these episodes, and the power was off, So, uh, and we weren't for sure how long, but while we were gone, the power was on long enough to cook up this dish. Um, and everything was still hot. Yes, so. everything was, was still hot, and smelled really good so we're, we're taping this later on in the evening because the power finally came back on you may need salt and pepper because i don't remember adding. you don't remember adding any well let's try it without the salt and pepper and see what she's like it's a italian hobo stew with o'brien potatoes let's try it <laughs> Looks nice and hearty. Mm-hmm. The tomatoes do give it a little bit of a 
Italian kick, a little Italian flavor with the basil and garlic and herb. The carrots make it. The carrots just absolutely kill this recipe because they're really sweet along with the peas. The sweetness of the peas and carrots, that is that is fantastic. I am, um, I like my food salty, so I am going to put a little bit more salt on it for my taste. Um, I don't think it needs any pepper. But that right there is some good soup. And on a cold, windy day like we had up here today, here in Indiana, this is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give Jackie two thumbs up. Mm. I'm going to blow you kisses, Jackie, because that, <laughs> that is really good. That reminds me of um, kind of like my mom's beef stew when I was growing up. That's really good. The hamburger's really good in it. So, Jackie, two thumbs up and a smile. You did good. And that just goes to show y'all that we will try the recipes that uh, you send us. Um, now, granted, if we get like a bajillion recipes, we're not going to try them all. But the ones we do try, yeah, we're going to let you know about them. Um, and it takes us a while to get through all of them. So, yeah. everybody be patient. Yeah, just be patient <laughs> and we'll get to you. But, wow. Wow. Um, Jackie, you sent us a real winner. That's a that's a humdinger. And I just reverted back to the 20s and 30s. And, well, that's a real humdinger of a recipe right there, folks. <laughs> but that is really, really good. So thank you, Jackie, for sending us this recipe. Um, we're very happy with it. Um, again, now I've got a whole bunch of it. The um, guys at work are good. We'll eat on it. And then uh, um, come Monday morning, I'm definitely going to take this in. The, the guys and gals at work are really going to love that recipe. So again, thank you, Jackie. And thank you all, again, for watching our, our, uh, our shows here um, at Cooking Chris's Dishes with the good old boy, which is me. And uh, if you would, check us out at RecipesThatProc.com where you can find this recipe along with many, many, many more. And again, subscribe to my channel here at YouTube.com slash MikeyGood and we will keep sending, uh, we'll keep doing more shows and, uh, and uh, cooking some good things up. Send us recipe suggestions, tell us what you like, what you don't like in the comments below. And, uh, you know, we'll get back with you and uh, we'll try some of your recipes. And uh, also, if you would, give us a like over on Facebook at Recipes That Croc, as well as Good Old Tunes with Good Old Boy. Uh, that's where we have our recipes as well, along with uh, music and other fun things from the family. And y'all keep watching and we'll keep cooking and all will be well. Thank you again. Bye. Super, super soup that it is.